President Barack Obama was elected president of the United States in November of 2008. He was sworn into office January of 2009. You might remember it. It was kind of a big deal. It was kind of a big day in Washington. The largest crowds ever turning out to see a U.S. president sworn in. That was January 2009. By March 2009, the right wing in America just could not take it anymore. What they're doing right now is destroying this country. Everyone that I know of, at least, is very angry about it. We're very upset. We want this guy out. We want him to be impeached. Whatever. Well, what I don't like is that this guy is doing this by executive order, one after the other, and the American people are sitting like a bunch of schmucks watching a dictatorship emerge in front of their eyes. That's right. And you know what? And I think it is time to start talking about impeachment. Somebody's got to get this guy under control. He's out of control. Absolutely. Thank you for the call. Thank you for the call. Thank you for the I have to go. It was already time to start impeaching President Obama seven weeks into his presidency. By the fall of 2009, uh, my friends at World Net Daily were just asking whether it was time to start whispering about impeaching President Obama. That's when the Impeach Obama campaign website and petition was started, nine months into President Obama's first term. They didn't want to impeach him for anything specific. They just liked the idea of impeaching him. By 2010, Tom Tancredo's Republican campaign for Colorado governor was basing itself on wanting President Obama to be impeached for something having to do with immigration. Uh, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman by then was already calling for President Obama to be impeached for something, uh, not quite clear what. Congressman Tim Wahlberg uh, said as a candidate that year in 2010 that President Obama should be impeached as a means of trying to get his real birth certificate, not that fake one that says he was born in Hawaii. The executive has uh, an awful lot of power to keep from showing certain things unless the courts will stand up or unless Congress in majority will stand up up to including impeachment. Impeachment. It's 2010. President Obama has been president for a year, but he should be impeached for his real birth certificate. Within a year of that uh, was Newt Gingrich saying we should impeach President Obama over the Defense of Marriage Act. Yes, Mr. Gingrich, what could possibly go wrong? Uh, Republican Congressman Jim Sensenbrenner was saying President Obama should be impeached over Fast and Furious. Uh, Congressman, now Senator Tim Scott and Congressman Steve King, were both saying that President Obama should be impeached over the debt ceiling. Uh, Congressman Michael Burgess of Texas went to a town hall meeting that August, August 2011, uh, and quickly found himself having this discussion with his folks back home. Hi. Um, the issue of impeachment. 90% of the people here remember Nixon, what happened to Nixon, remember what happened to Clinton. If we could just tie his hands, because I'm not convinced we've got that much time. What needs to happen? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, and I agree with you. We would tie things up. No question about that. All right. So that exchange between the congressman and his constituent, and, and then a follow-up question from a local reporter, uh, led to this remarkably restrained report uh, in the Fort Worth Star-Telegram about just what happened at that town hall. When one attendee suggested that the House push for impeachment proceedings against the president to obstruct the president from pushing his agenda, Congressman Burgess was receptive. It needs to happen, and I agree with you, it would tie things up, no question about that. When asked about the comment later, Congressman Burgess said... He was not sure whether the proper charges to bring up articles of impeachment against Obama were there, but he didn't rule out pursuing such a course anyway. So I don't know why we could impeach him or even try to, but yes, let's plan on it anyway. It would be so much fun. What's the downside? That was all by 2011. That was all by the first two years of Barack Obama being president of the United States. By 2012, though, the impeach Obama for something, anything movement really started to feel its oats. That was the year that the LaRouches said that President Obama must be impeached or there will be thermonuclear war with Russia. Only impeaching President Obama can stop that. At the same time, Grover Norquist, the tax guy, was saying that President Obama should be impeached if he does not extend the Bush tax cuts. Sure, why not? Um, then this year, immediately upon being sworn into Congress, two brand new Republican congressmen, uh, one from Florida and one from Texas, started off their brand new careers in Congress by saying they wanted to impeach President Obama over something having to do with guns. 
This is a satisfying enough exercise for the right uh, that, again, my good friends at the World Net Daily Conspiracy Theory Jumbo Mumbo website decided that they were just going to go whole hog this past February. They ran an omnibus article on what could we possibly impeach President Obama for. They round robin in this article all their favorite possibilities of maybe the ways that we could conceivably try to impeach him. They went through uh, Fast and Furious and drones, and they went through recess appointments, they went through czars, suing Arizona over the Papers, Please law, the DREAM Act, cap and trade, the Defense of Marriage Act, Benghazi, going to war in Libya, gun control, and of course, as you see there, is dastardly aiding and abetting of the new Black Panther Party as they, as we all know, took over America's national elections and turned us into a new Black Panther Party Marxist fascist dictatorship or whatever. Just try all of them. We can put them on a chore wheel and try a new one each week. Surely one of those might work, right, to impeach him? Let's try them all. There's got to be a way to do it. Republicans and the right love talking about impeaching President Obama, even when they're not sure exactly why. It's almost like an, an involuntary tick. They sneeze and a little impeach Obama just squeezes out without them meaning to. They love the idea. Well, today it was Republican U.S. Senator James Inhofe who got to do it. This is why he says we should impeach President Obama today. Of all of the great cover-ups in history, we're talking about the Pentagon Papers, the, the Iran-Contra, Watergate, and all the rest of them. This, I said back in November 28th on uh, Fox, is going to go down as the most serious, most egregious cover-up in American history. People need to know how serious this is. To me, this, people may be starting to use the I word before too long. Okay, okay. The, the, the I word meaning impeachment. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why they have to spell it. I mean, they, they have been saying the I word since March of 2009. Why get all nervous about spelling it out now? The biggest cover up in American history. Uh, the latest reason that we must impeach President Obama, according to Senator Jim Inhofe of Oklahoma, is, of course, Benghazi. The attack on the U.S. diplomatic facility in Libya last fall in which the U.S. ambassador to Libya and three other Americans were killed. Now, there have been a lot of attacks on U.S. diplomatic facilities abroad over the years. There were about a dozen violent attacks on U.S. embassies abroad during the Bush administration, for example. So if it is not instantly obvious why an attack on an American diplomatic facility abroad should be grounds for impeaching this president, but not any of the other presidents who this has happened to, well, I'm here to help. Uh, depending on the day, depending on which hour of Fox News you're watching, uh, there are a number of different ways that the right has tried to make this into a political scandal and not just a tragedy. Sometimes they say, hey, hey, ho, ho, it wasn't just a spontaneous attack, it was planned. Sometimes they say, <clears throat> who changed the talking points? Sometimes they say, hey, Obama, why did you not call it an act of terror? Sometimes they say, why were you not better prepared for the attack? Sometimes they say, why did the military not respond? We know the answer um, to why now they said, uh, we know the answer now to why they said uh, it was a spontaneous attack. Uh, and the answer to this one was um, that they were wrong when they said it was a spontaneous attack. But the intelligence community thought it was a spontaneous attack and said so in the talking points that they gave to administration officials. That was their initial assessment. It was wrong. And when they realized it wrong, they said so and the administration said so. And so they stopped describing it as a spontaneous attack, even though they did initially. So this one's kind of done, right? I mean, we, we know what happened. That all happened right away. It was over very quickly. They don't still say it was a spontaneous attack. They admit that was initially their assessment. It was wrong. Uh, on the terror one, why didn't the president call it an act of terror? You remember when Mitt Romney tried to gotcha the president with this at the debates? Uh, the problem was that the president uh, did call it an act of terror right away. He called it an act of terror the day after the attacks happened. He did it in public and on tape, which kind of put this one to rest. No acts of terror will ever shake the resolve of this great nation, alter that character, or eclipse the light of the values that we stand for. So that's one that's answered to, right? They, they did call it an act of terror right away. Why didn't you call it an act of terror? We did call it an act of terror right away, immediately. Um, as for this one, as for why the military uh, did not respond to stop the attack, 
Uh, the military themselves has also answered that one. Uh, the then Secretary of Defense answered that one back in February. There was not enough time, given the speed of the attack, for armed military assets to respond. So that's why the military did not respond. They could not get there in time. So says the military. Uh, so that leaves mm, this one. Who changed the talking points? The intelligence community talking points for the administration officials in the immediate aftermath of the attack. They were sent around to the FBI and the State Department and the White House. The email chain showing the initial draft of those talking points and the revision process, that email chain was sent to members of Congress a couple of months ago in February while they were considering the nomination of the new CIA director. So Congress has had the talking points and how they were changed and by whom for a couple of months now, showing the revision, showing how they happened. ABC published them today for the public as if they were a smoking gun and all the Republicans in Congress who already had these things and have had them for months purported to be outraged by what was in them, shocked, impeach, impeach. But they have had them for two and a half months now and they have never said anything about them before. Just today they decided it was a smoking gun even though this has been long answered. So that leaves this. Why were we not prepared? Why were we not better prepared for this attack? This is a good question. And, and this was the point that was made damningly and unsparingly as the conclusion of the inquiry into what happened into Benghazi, the inquiry that was headed up by the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Admiral Mike Mullen, and the veteran diplomat, Thomas Pickering tasked with an independent, comprehensive review of what went wrong when our ambassador and those other three Americans died in Libya, the review found that the State Department had, quote, a security posture that was inadequate for Benghazi and grossly inadequate to deal with the attack that took place. The report condemned the systemic failures in leadership and management deficiencies at senior levels of the State Department. It was sort of a brutal report. And when that brutal report came out in December, uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said she accepted all of the report's recommendations without reservation, and she accepted full responsibility. As I have said many times, I take responsibility, and nobody is more committed to getting this right. I am determined to leave the State Department and our country safer, stronger, and more secure. That was back in January, after the official report came out cataloging the one actually outstanding and really important question from what happened in Benghazi. And the same question obviously could be and is asked every time one of our diplomatic facilities is attacked abroad. This is the outstanding matter. The administration accepted all the recommendations of the report on this as a problem. They are implementing those recommendations now. But today, all of a sudden, apparently, for some reason, impeach, impeach. We will figure out why later. Let's just impeach. Joining us.